In this video, we are going to see how to use d3.js libraries and with the help of that, how we can create first step in the uh, Visual Studio code and that we will see step by step and including many other things as well. Very first of all, we do have this code which is available in the visual.ts file. However, before doing anything, let's try to understand this package.js JSON file. Basically, first try to understand these dependencies where we do have this D3 and in your files as well, if you are following you, uh, with me, you must be having this D3 files here, which is having uh, this version and uh, other things are there. If you can't find the details like the same, similar to my code here, then you, you can download the file from the notes section and you can try to install the same as well in your system. So first, let's try to understand what is D3. When it comes to D3, D3 is nothing but a data-driven document do, documents where it is an extension to the JavaScript library and uh, which is used to manipulate documents based on data. Now, in this uh, URL, you can find all the details about the D3. Uh, what is it? Uh, basically, you can bind the data data to document object model and then you can apply data-driven transformation to the document. So this is something which is an example they have given like you can use D3 to generate HTML table from an array of numbers. So this is something which we can do. There are some selections, dynamic properties and uh, other operations which we can perform on this and that uh, with that we can learn from this website as well if you wanted to understand this more uh, detail. However, as a basic, we need to uh, understand that this is in a library for manipulating documents uh, and we can bring data to life using HTML, SVG and CSS uh, components. Now coming to the code again, now we, we will see means uh, this is something which is we are going to see as package.json and we must be having this D3 which is uh, these things uh, must be there and you can see when we have this included in node models as well, there are various dependencies or various models which has been mentioned and which are uh, related to the D3. So these are the ready-made things which we can use in our system and with the help of that, we can try to build our own code. Now let's go back to the visual dot ts file in this we do have this class where i have just deleted this code which was uh, written uh, in the previous video about displaying a sample text message now what we are going to do is we are just going to use uh, d3 so for that we will just try write write code which is uh, let's say import from d3 so this is something which is uh, we can uh, do that but if you can see means this is we cannot specify anything so we need to mention we need to mention something what to import. So basically uh, there are uh, various options. If you just press control space, you can see means what are the things which can be available in D3. So there are so many things which are available. And if you are aware about this D3 library, then maybe it is helpful to use it as well in our uh, code. So for now we are going to use select. So this is something which is we are going to use it. So now we can see means we have added this select and now we are going to use this select in, in this constructor. So in constructor, as you are aware, we are going to use this constructor method, which is again initialized when the program is run. So for that, we will just try to use this select. And in the bracket, we will try to use our options. So options is nothing but whatever comes in this bracket, which we'll be adding and we will create one element. So first of all, we'll, we need to try to create one element. So that element is just a rectangle where we need height, width, and we will try to fill up that with the color as well. So that is something which we are going to do is now what we can do, we do have this options, um, uh, constructor options coming in this options and we are going to add this element in that so for that we need to use append function which is already we can uh, we have seen it and in this we are going to mention as svg so this is uh, svg uh, svg is no nothing but scalable vector graphics elements which can be used to create uh, html objects now what is svg in detail if you if you wanted to learn it let's try to see on its official website for svg if you google it out then there are some tutorials so this is one website which is which is giving this information where we you can say that svg is one tag which is in available in the html and you can use with height and width and it can create any other elements in inside it so this is circle element has been created and that is what something which is nothing but scalable vector graphics. So these are required when we are creating graphical elements. So that um, way we need this SVG. If you wanted to understand more in about this SVG, then you can see there are various topics about SVG in HTML, rectangle, 
circle polygon there are many, many things which we can try to use this and we can understand uh, how svg works now coming uh, coming back to this uh, as we have created one svg so we are trying to create one svg let's try to do that so for that we can just uh, use again an append function and in this we will try to use rectangle so this is something which is we are going to do is and now once we have this rectangle we need to specify its attributes like width height and then color or anything which we wanted to do that for that we will uh, use this attribute function which is attr and in this bracket we will just mention as let's say width and in this width we will mention as 80 we can again specify this at attr function and in that we can just again add our height as well and in this we will just mention again its height and we can specify and the last thing which we are going to do is adding a color so we will again mention as attribute and then in this we will just mention as fill after that we can just mention any color which is we wanted to have it let's mention as orange and then we can just give a semicolon now this is something which is created and now you can see means if you wanted to do this let's format this as well uh, you can give like this uh, in so that it will looks nice now you can see this is the svg element we have created and on after that we have created a rectangle uh, element and uh, we have specified its uh, sp dimensions like height width and its fill as well so we'll try to see means how it works in the power bi let's try to save this if you come here we'll just try to refresh this now and we'll try to see means how it looks like so now you can see when we are uh, we are refreshing it you can see a new rectangle has been created with orange color so this is how it works at the first place now we have got this created now uh, how, how we can create a shape object and how it has been colored to the orange so that is something which is have done however we now, now need to understand how when the update method is called means how the me update method works so for that we do have this right now this code which is written here in the constructor and in uh, we do have this update method which is here so now we are try going to try how we can change its uh, the box color to uh, green uh, when whenever it is updated so uh, the code we need to read right here in this update method so for that right now this whatever the element which is svg element which is we have created is just uh, available in this method only means in the constructor only and if you wanted to use it in this update method we should be moving it out of this uh, constructor so for that what we can mention at svg here and we will need, need to mention it is something which is so we can uh, use this options which is uh, available here so how to do that for that we do have some selection uh, method method which is available from the d3 so that we we are going to use it and in this we have selection method again and in this we can mention the svg element which is uh, as an attribute here uh, so just to let the svg uh, variable which is here which is we are going to use as a, it is as a svg element and we'll just give this uh, bracket so now it is giving some error which is now mentioning that it needs four four type arguments so basically if if you are not about uh, what what else we uh, what other parameters we can give then just mention as any any and any so this is something which is we can give and this this should be working now we have got this uh, uh, svg attribute created now we can make this as a private only because we wanted to use this svg element only to particular this class and not uh, not outside uh, to the power bi service so that is something we, which we can do it uh, to use it in this class only uh, but this is private for to this class but that this can be used in this constructor and public uh, update method as well so this is something which is we can do it now what we can do is in svg so what uh, we can mention as this dot svg now once we have written this uh, this dot svg is equal to um, whatever element which is we are going to hold it as and we'll just give a semicolon here and here also we are going to say this dot svg so this is something which we are going to say so whatever uh, rectangle shape which is uh, we have created we are going to hold it in this uh, function uh, so this is something which is going to be used uh, and which can be available here as well in the update method so once we have done this now we can uh, like go in this update method and we can just write this as this dot svg dot we can use a select and in this we can just uh, select the rectangle which is available here and in this uh, we will then ag again uh, specify the attribute value which is again and we will mention as fill 
comma then we will mention as green so this is something which we can uh, do with this now once we have done this let's try to save this and we will go back to check means in the power bi service whether it is getting uh, reflected or not now if he here if you can just uh, refresh it now you can see this is uh, immediately showing as a green now we can see why it is showing green when we are just refreshing it so basically power bi service runs the constructor method once uh, when the it is run however it is after that immediately it runs the update method as well that means this constructor method will run at only at once when the program is run and but this update method will be also running after this constructor method so this can be called at multiple times as well or maybe at whenever we wanted to call it but this is something how it works uh, this power bi uh, service this is how we can implement the first shape how we can change its color as well so that's what means i wanted to uh, show in this video in the next video we will see some of the something we useful on the databases which is about the bar chart